So I think it's safe to say that Abigail has been a pleasant surprise for most players of Street Fighter V. Initially when the trailer for the character was released, the reception was overwhelmingly negative, to say the least. The character got a lot of dislikes, he looked huge, he felt really out of place in the game. I didn't really like him initially either. However, I think, again, it's safe to say that most people are happy with Abigail. He actually turned out to be a fairly complex and fun to play character. Not kind of a simple grappler, but what we're going to talk about today is how Abigail fits into the meta and kind of the tiers of Street Fighter V. Because he is kind of outside of the norm, uh, not just because of his size, kind of his gameplay as well. There have been quite a few characters in Street Fighter V that have been sort of unorthodox, and some have been more successful than others. Well, first of all, there was Fang, and Fang kind of represents the, or Fang, I, I think it's pronounced Fang, he kind of represents the unsuccessful side. I think Capcom were too scared of this character being way too powerful, so they kind of made him really weak. And he's not bad, I think a lot of people have proven that Fang is not bad. However, he's not really good either. Next up we had Ed. However, Ed was only really different in terms of his execution. Uh, in terms of his moves, he really played like any other Street Fighter V character. He had a projectile, he had an uppercut, kind of a kick move. So yeah, only his execution was different. However, Abigail is really different. He still has all the same, he still has special moves, he still has a command grab and all that. However, first of all, he's huge, and that means his normals have, probably outside of Dalsim, some of the best range. Uh, other than that, he is unique because he's covered in armor. And you know, the armor thing is usually something that's more common in like NRS games and all that. Usually some Street Fighter characters have armor, but it doesn't quite work the same way as Abigail's does. Second of all, he has this interesting run mechanic and it can also be cancelled. His sweep is really different. He actually has kind of good mobility tools when you think about it. He has the most HP in the game and he hits like a truck. So the big question is, is Abigail actually overpowered? And to answer that question, I've been playing Abigail for a couple of days now and I think Abigail is not overpowered. However, he really throws people off. Probably because of his kind of unique gameplay mechanics. People like really don't know how to handle this character. To be honest, I don't know how to handle this character entirely myself because I feel like once he gets started, he just deals so much damage and stun that he's like impossible to kind of break down. He really is a tank in every sense of the word. Especially someone like me who plays Dalsim, who's already kind of a squishy character. You know, I try to keep him out, but then again, he's covered in armor, so it's really difficult. However, I don't think Abigail is overpowered. However, he does have the potential to be top tier. And to be honest, I'm not gonna like shit on this character, but... Come on, do we really want Abigail to be the best character in the game? Not saying that he's gonna be, because there haven't been any kind of big majors or tournaments where Abigail was really used. Who knows, maybe he is really a gimmick character. I think Birdie is probably some of the best examples of this. Well, the only other example I can think of. He really is a character that does very well online. I think Birdie has the most master ranked places in the cast. However, online he has done okay, but not terribly well. So is Abigail gonna be another one of those characters? He very well could be, however, I think Abigail does have a lot more going for him than Birdie. We'll just really have to see how, again, how he kind of fits into the meta, because I think how he really fits into the meta is that he doesn't give a shit about it. He just like, you'd think you'd keep him out really easily, but it doesn't work like that. He has that flip to get in, he has really, really long, long range normals. And I think he does really give trouble to some of the other grapplers, like Zangief especially, who kind of relies on being up in your face. And Abigail kind of just like uh, allows you to keep him out. He also has a parry, which, I don't know, he has a lot of tools. And again, we'll see how kind of good players, like pro players, can use these tools to their advantage. Because, again, he definitely has the potential to be top tier. And, again, I'm not sure if that's... 
if this guy really should be the face of Street Fighter V, even though he's fun and I do like the character. So yeah, this was just a video kind of rambling on Abigail. Ever since I've seen basically every pro player play him to death, I've been kind of thinking about this and I just got the character, I had to buy him because I was really interested to see how he plays and everything. And he's weird, he's different, which I do appreciate. I know some people don't like that Capcom kind of just like throws new characters in while leaving out some of the older ones like Sagat and all that, some of the fan favorites. But you know, as someone who I would say isn't really that attached to Street Fighter kind of the universe, this is my first Street Fighter game, I don't know, I don't care. I'd rather have them try something new and Abigail is definitely something new and he's fun. So yeah, again, just kind of a rambling video. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and goodbye.